Master Mike, good afternoon. Well, we have the weather for the moment anyway. There may be some sprinkles across the weekend, but let's um, make the most of it. If you're suffering with hay fever at the moment, especially if you're next to somebody who's decided to grow a, a wildflower meadow, I do sympathise with you. And hi, Gemma, she said, you said yesterday that... Uh, it's the summer solstice next week. It is Wednesday, the 21st of June is the summer solstice. The days will get shorter after next Wednesday, and it will all be downhill to Christmas. Well, it's uh, that time of the year, isn't it? Uh, let's get to the phone straight away today, and Wilf's with us. Hi, Wilf. Hi, uh, I'm sorry to bother you again, but uh, about it's about the beach again. Yeah. There's a, there's a, uh, in the Independent, there's an article this week, and it's entitled, Save the Beach for Our Nesting Birds. But it's got a picture, a very poor small picture, and it says on it, Ramsey North Beach. But it's a picture of Ramsey South Beach. It is, that's yes. That's the I first can, mistake. That's right. He's looking, got it wrong. he's looking towards the old beach hotel. That's the one. They got it wrong. The camera should be the other way around, pointing into the corner where all the crap is. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, uh, any birds trying to nest there, where they've got their photograph, uh, will need breeding apparatus because the tide comes in over all that. Um, so there's no birds nesting up there. They need to turn the camera around, point at the corner, and there's no birds nesting there now. There'll be none this rest of the summer. That's all finished. That's, that, the nesting time is finished for that. Um, but I'm trying to read bits of the paper. I'm trying to sort of... Anyway, it says, it's, it's the, it says in, this, in this letter that it's, it's owned by the government. Now, who are the government? They represent the people. I say South Beach belongs to the people of Ramsey, who are a very small patch of beach when the tide is in, and that patch is filthy. And I'm the only commissioner that seems to want to get it cleaned. So is, um, is De so Defa is responsible. Well, it's Defa that wants to keep the beach preserved for nesting birds and marine wildlife, it says. That's, 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 what, that's what Jewel McGuinness says what they say, but that's not correct. When I was a young man, the tide came into that corner all the time. Uh, the, the government altered the breakwater and that ended up putting all the crap in the corner and building up. You used to be able to jump off that corner straight into the sea. No birds ever nested there. They're only nesting there since the crap built up. Uh, you get a good blow from the Eastley and all that will be gone anyway but we haven't had one lately. It's all been dead calm weather, and it's stinking. Okay. And the kids, the, the people and the kids are complaining to me, and I've done all I can. It's the rest of them won't do anything. They just leave it as it is. So uh, Nobody's coming down and picking anything up. Hmm. And so... Uh, and it, it, as I say, it's a very small patch they've got when the tide is in. If it was square, it's, it's, it's triangular. But if it was square, 100 yards square, that's all you got left. So that's where do we, left. where do we go? By the way, can you use the word rubbish in future? Where do we go from here? Well, I'm hoping that the people will get on to DEFA and the people will get on to, um, on, on to the commissioners because the kids will be breaking up shortly. And every, every evening, the tide at the moment, every, every, every night the tide is coming in. And it comes in, uh, it's in about, let's say, 8 o'clock. It's absolutely full of people on the little bit of beach that's left. And they're looking for the spot to, to clean up, to sit on. Or you've got to the towels down to sit on it and all the rest of it. Because it's all full of rotten seaweed and, and bits of wood and, and rubbish. Does it smell? Yes. Mm. Yes, it smells. Well, we'll we, we have to wait to see. We have to wait to see what happens because nobody appears to want to do anything, Wilf. Well, 
as I say, I'm the only one that seems to be of all the commissioners that's trying to do something. So when you um, used to clear it away, did you have permission to clear it away or did you just turn up with a digger? No, no, that used to be done, believe it or not, by the commissioners. And the very last time, which would probably be 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, I lent them my digger at the time to do it. And they were delighted because I, I let them have it for free. But that's, they asked for it and I give it to them. Now then, they had their digger and all the rest of it. They sold that because they weren't using it very much. And they've, they've got tractors with buckets on and all that. It wouldn't take them many minutes to clear it. Mm. But they just don't want to do it. So are we saying then that the commissioners are saying that it's DEFA's responsibility and DEFA just want to leave the, the rubbish there for non-existent nesting birds? You've got it. OK. All right, well, that, well, we'll that, keep our that, fingers that, crossed. That, right. All right, thanks for calling today. Right. OK. Good all to hear from you. And by the way, if anybody's got any photos of this uh, pile of rubbish, then by all means... Uh, you can uh, send them to WhatsApp to us if you're one double six one double seven. It's on page uh, eleven of today's uh, Manx Independent, um, which if you haven't yet bought your copy, nip out and get it. There, save the beach for our nesting birds. It is, and there's a photo of the wrong end of the beach. But anyway, it's a photo. Uh, thanks, Wilf. Good to hear from you. You can uh, text, email, call, and WhatsApp, and also. I got a note in from Graham. We didn't get to this yesterday, but I want to, to mention it. Yesterday was Victoria McLaughlin, uh, the Social Security uh, Director and uh, the Member of Treasury who's in the Social Security. That's uh, Sarah Maltby, MHK. And we, were, we were talking about benefits yesterday. Uh, Graham just said there's a statutory minimum wage that's said to be the minimum required for people to live and pay their bills. So why are pensioners who've paid in for all their working life expected to survive on not much more than half of that? Rent doesn't half when you retire, neither do food and energy costs. I just wonder what the rationale uh, w was with that. That we couldn't fit that one in yesterday, but I'm happy just to put that out if anybody's got a comment on it. And again, uh, another one who just said, I agreed, Howard called yesterday, and just, we were talking about uh, benefits, and um, uh, I agree with Howard, says this WhatsApp, <laughs> if you work, you're penalised. If you're on benefits, you get everything. If you work, you pay for everything. I don't include the ill or the dis people with disabilities in that. I applied for a grant to insulate my loft, and I got turned down. The chap up the road who does work got his done for free. So are people getting punished for working? There was also a message about... Um, uh, food banks. Uh, well, there was Bill who just said, I know of two people who are on sickness benefit who were completely fine. However, the system made it completely comfortable for them to get their rent paid and enough to live on, so they just don't get a job. One's now um, very ill, self-inflicted, uh, but all paid for by benefits, and the other's getting the same way. Both are qualified to work, and but they're on benefits of over £20,000 a year. Uh, says Bill. It's like the food banks. Yes, some people really do need food banks, uh, but if you give a living for free, there will be people who will take advantage. In the Isle of Man, there's plenty of work, no need for any able-bodied person to be out of work. Uh, this is where the whole thing strays into, obviously, subjective judgment and to morality because there will be some people let's face it who will take advantage some people who do take advantage and lots of people do know the benefit system what you do about it quite what you do about it victoria said they've got 80 cases they're working on at the moment and they do take people to court who commit benefit fraud how do you stop it I suppose it comes back to, again, it's the uh, the people who are antisocial, the people who litter, the people who throw litter here, there and everywhere. It's the people who don't uh, pay their way in society. There will be a minority of people who, if you like, take the mickey. Quite what you do about them and how you stop them, do you use the carrot or the stick? 
You got any thoughts? The democratic process ground on yesterday in Patrick. The Patrick Commissioner's by-election was held last night. Richard Jones elected to the vacant seat. Of course, he was there a while back. He got 235 votes. Kevin Oliphant-Smith came second with 19. 254 votes were cast, and there was a voter turnout of 21.5%. Our local democracy reporter, Emma Draper, was there live at the count. We're here at Foxdale Primary School, one of the three polling stations, and we're now going to bring you the result of today Today's by-election from the Deputy Returning Officer, Jason Roberts. Thank you. So the notice of the result for the by-election to Patrick Parish Commissioners. I hereby give notice that the candidate elected at the above ele- election is Richard Dennis Jones of Ash Lodge, Patrick Road in St John's. The total number of votes given for each candidate is follows. Richard Dennis Jones, 235 votes. Kevin Oliphant Smith, 19 votes. Total number of voters voting at the election, other than those voters whose ballot papers have been rejected, is 254. There were no rejected ballot papers. So I congratulate Richard Dennis-Jones on his election to the Patrick Parish Commissioners. And we'll now hear from the winner. I just want to know, how are you feeling? Are you excited, nervous about what's what's to come? Uh, Hi there. Uh, First of all, I'd like to thank Alice and my wife for all the support and my family and friends who convinced me to stand and for everyone who voted for me. And uh, yes, very much looking forward to representing the people who voted for me. Well, congratulations. Well done, Richard Jones. Uh, And uh, 21.5% voter turnout on a day like today, on a hot day in Patrick. Well done to uh, Richard Jones and commiserations to Kevin Oliphant-Smith. But at least we had a contest and uh, that's what happened. You heard it live. It was on live last night on Manx Radio. Well done to uh, Emma for uh, sticking it out (laughs) in the weather there yesterday. Um... I don't know whether you knew uh, or whether you are aware, but last year Charles Gard made a short film highlighting some of the unsightly areas around Douglas and other parts of the Isle of Man. Charles Gard, of course, long-time heritage campaigner, broadcaster, filmmaker, journalist and conservator. Um, Charles Gard's actually been around with uh, the camera and has revisited those sites to see if there have been any changes. In the new film, he also takes the opportunity to sound off about some of the other areas of concern. Uh, If you want to spot it, it's now online. It's called Welcome Back to the Isle of Man, Charles Gard. The poor state of some parts of the island has been raised by an MHK. And sad as it Last is, year, I uploaded a short video entitled Welcome to the Isle of Man, which made some small criticisms of the state of the island. Sort of an impression is a number of people, not least some members of Tinwald, have suggested I take a look a year later to see if anything has changed. There he is. You can see it if you uh, nip into a search engine, put Welcome Back to the Isle of Man, or if you subscribe to Charles Guard videos, which you'll find on YouTube. YouTube, you can see that follow-up video. It's about 25-odd minutes, and he looks around. um, Brickbats and bouquets alike. So well done to Charles for getting that together. He comes to a fairly sanguine uh, solution, really, at the end. And, uh, well, I'll let you watch it and just see what you think of Charles's conclusion about it. Uh, Dave uh, emailed in just to say, oh, it's a a text in just to say, Wilf's right, that patch of South Beach needs raking and clearing, stating that the bird's nest there is nonsense because that patch of beach is trampled all day, every day. Get it cleared, make it a nice place for people to sit. It's a small job every few days and it will make a massive difference difference. We should just get it sorted. It's an embarrassment to Ramsey, that part of the beach. So if you can send a a photo if anybody's down there today, that'd be great. And John says, thank you, Will, for the voice of common sense and local knowledge. Why is it that people in the UK get free prescriptions over the age of 60, but in the Isle of Man it is 65, says Texter 081. I'm on an incapacity benefit, and by the time I've paid rent, electricity and gas, I've got £30 every week to buy £30 to buy food. Then um, I have osteoarthritis and... um, I'm tired of people saying that I'm some sort of leech, says 501. Thank you for that. Nobody's saying you're a leech. 
We're just trying to get to the bottom of it. I just wonder what you thought of yesterday with Victoria and uh, Sarah. I have to tell you, that was Sarah Maltby's idea. She said she wanted to get to the bottom of benefits and wanted everybody to know uh, where the money comes from and where the money goes to. So it was interesting just to, to hear what, uh, what they had to say yesterday. And again, any conclusions by all means. Uh, here's a note in that just said um, the how about some people are receiving full pensions from both the Isle of Man and the UK uh, says 333 I think what came out yesterday was it's it really behoves you you've you've got to find out information it was interesting the tale about the two sisters one of whom didn't get the information one of whom which uh, did get the information and, you know, one person was suffering, obviously, financially because of that, and the other person had got it sorted out. But there were lots of things we didn't get to yesterday, and I'm happy to present them, just just really for your opinion. Hi, Andy. I've been listening today about the autism pathway. I'd love you for you to ask the ministers about the autism pathway. I have a son who's autistic, who's 18 now. He has a high IQ, which means we get no services whatsoever. All services now are based on a low IQ. Now, this is supposed to be all-inclusive autism pathway. It's not all-inclusive. They're picking and choosing who gets the services. My, my son gets nothing and he will get nothing. He's now 18. The only help we get now is from cross carers. We get no help from the Department of Health and Social Care at all anymore. So I don't know where this idea of this pathway is coming from because nobody asked us... Did they really ask the parents out there who have the autistic children what they really wanted out of a pathway? Or did a group of ministers and health and social care people sit in a room and decide what was going to be done? Because we've had no consultation. And I think the best people who should have input on the strategy should have been parents of autistic children. Because nobody else knows in the world what it's like to bring up a child with autism apart from the parents. Thank you, Andy. 23 minutes past 12. Uh, there's a new provider for the Alaman Post Office in Peel. They've been appointed following the announcement that the post office in Peel is due to close. From the 10th of July, SPA is going to be offering counter services and a parcel collection. This is not a post office. It's a counter service uh, arrangement. The arrangement's going to be in place until at least the 31st of March 2025. Counter services at the spa will be available 9 to 5.30 Monday to Friday and 9 till midday 30 on Saturday. Parcel collection services available from 7 until 9, 7am, 7 9pm 9 Monday to Saturday and 8am to 9pm on Sunday. Uh, including bank holidays. Uh, if you get Treasury welfare payments, you'll be able to collect them from the new location from the 10th of July. Peel Post Office, in its current location, will close Friday the 7th of July at 3.30pm. So, on the following Monday, the 10th, the SPA will be the location for the post office in Peel. We did ask the post office to be interviewed about the change. Uh, the Alaman post office has declined the opportunity to state their case. If you're in Peel, I just wonder how you think about it, particularly parking around uh, that. How are you going to cope with that if you're nipping in to get something? I just wonder what your thoughts are. I got a note in from Jenny who said, what's happening to the old post office in Peel? Are they going to sell it off? I happen to see somebody who I know is an estate agent going into the premises. So is that well we asked them the post office to chat about it. They've as I say they've declined the opportunity, but no doubt we'll find out. Anyway, that's what's happening. The post office closes on the uh, 7th of July, 3:30 p.m. and reopens in the spa on Monday the 10th. David's on now. Hi David. Hi, Andy. Um, just to indicate, last night there was uh, the electoral meeting that's going around, and I know... Uh, it was at uh, St Andrew's ago. Church Hall, wasn't it? Yeah, and we hit a, an all-time record. Just guess how many, and there's a possible 40,000 constituency in the East. Well, bearing, turned up? bearing in mind, there were, <laughs> I think, two went to the Ramsey one, uh, half a yeah. dozen. 
N O double. Twelve. Uh, Twenty one, I think. It, oh, uh, really? No, tw- sorry, tw- Twenty one, I think, altogether. That's fantastic. Uh, Great turnout compa- compared to what happened in Ramsey. <laughs> Well, yes, but I wanted to just come on and say there's still an opportunity because there's one to happen near uh, Arbury, I think, down down the south. And but there's still an opportunity for people to write in how elections have been, how they run, how access to the elections are for people because sometimes people do struggle. And we we even talked about uh, electronic voting. And they took a little straw poll out of the 21. I think half of us wanted said we could go down that particular road to make life easier. And that's the the whole thing, is it? It's easier to vote instead of going somewhere and actually putting an X on a, on a box. And what did you think of the meeting, box. David? It was all right. I wasn't excited uh, as much. Well... Uh, yeah, no, I don't mind. It was a public meeting anyway, as I can tell it. Rob Costa brought up a scenario where we can actually get uh, the other half of Onken back into Onken properly instead of golf. So uh, those people who are living in Lakeside and out that way and uh, the rural area too, there is hope. How can that horizon. happen? Well, you've got to have so many voters per area. And I think where golf was, they just chose some time ago that uh, Onken had a number of voters in excess, I suppose, and they just chopped them off. At one time, they're going to chop uh, Birch Hill off and throw that into uh, Garth, uh, but that, we, that one w- was stopped. But um, it was, um, if you could say, Lakeside was, I suppose, at the end of the day, sacrificed because members wanted to make sure that Onken and uh, Russian didn't have three votes, although we've never used uh, the three votes to alter the world in past history. Well, I'm very happy about the fact that 21 people showed up because it's a big improvement. (laughs) And the fact is, uh, you'll hear me bang on about this. Our democracy, and I don't care whether it's Patrick Commissioners or whether it's, you know, an MHK seat with, you know, with a lot of people in it. The democracy is down to us. It's it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, it will just wither away. And, you know, apathy and uh, disinterest is, is... you know, we've got to combat that. People to know that have to know that elections matter to them. Yes. And the other thing I learned last night was, too, because it's only to do with the national elections and not the local elections, where there could be ways of making things a lot more easier for people to vote for the local election, because the likes of Onken, we then encompass uh, half of uh, Lake, well, all Lakeside, the parish and so forth. So we go up to about 8,000, where the national politicians probably drop to about four for campus purposes. So I was a little bit disappointed. So I suppose the only uh, issue I've got is to tax that with Mr. Thomas. And uh, my last passing shot on the Friday is, if Mr. Thomas is asking questions as a housing board chairman, shouldn't he be registered as a landlord? I wonder. I li- <laughs> I'll wonder. leave it with you. All right. Thanks for calling today. Good to have a good weekend. Uh, Howard's on now. Hi, Howard. Hello, Andy. Just uh, returning back to uh, yesterday's programme, and that chap that's just been on now with his autistic, was an uh, autistic child and now an autistic uh, adult, um, that's going to go on for the rest of that uh, person's life. And he is not getting the help that he would like and deserves. But, um, as I said yesterday, there are a myriad of people out there who, uh, through the, the means of Facebook and WhatsApp and everything like that, learn all about the little tricks and swerves and answers that they can get to go down to Markwell House to increase their benefits. Um, and they said, oh, well, we will take the, the fine out of their future benefits. But some of these ones, are, as they said, have been taken 30, 40, and 50,000 pound out. And that's going to take an awful long time. But what they do, they go down and say, we can't manage on what you've given us now. You've reduced our money. And they'll get a... Um, a feedback on it then they get an extra few pound a week or something like that and they have all this well and truly sourced but that gentleman that was on a minute ago with uh, the autistic lad man 
uh, he's got to go to the likes of charities and crossroads, not only for help, but information. And it's not very forthcoming. From and, and, and all because he said the, that his, uh, the young man, the, his son who's, who's autistic, has got a high IQ. If yeah. he had a low IQ, that would be fine. Well, a lot of the autistic uh, children uh, do have IQs, but in a specific area. Um, it doesn't mean to say they're not autistic. They just have this one specific IQ, high pitch. And um, I know of one young man. He's registered nine on the IQ, uh, on the autistic scale. Yet you ask him any capital in the world any country in the capital, and he'll tell you without looking at maps or otherwise. Now, that is a specific uh, intelligence quota. And those those people are still, um, I hate to say this word, in a form of disabled, because they are truly um, disabled to the fact that they won't be able to get a full-time job. And they should have all the help that's gone. But the, the other ones, now... I never got a chance to ask, but you may remember yourself a long while ago, people that were on benefits, they used to receive a check towards the back end of the uh, the year, and it was for £750. Now, this is the farcical part about it. It was because they hadn't paid enough tax, and they were getting another £750 in the form of a check. Now... Eddie Tia, who was Treasury Minister at the time, he didn't put a stop to it, but he reduced it. And as far as I know, that is still, I'll stand corrected on this if it is, about £450 that they get because they're not paying enough tax. Yet uh, the pensioners, which I'm one of, um, they said, oh, uh, we're putting the pension up by 10.5%. But I'm, I've got um, my state pension, and I paid uh, many, many years into the company pension. I paid into it, so it wasn't free. And I found out in April that my tax had gone up uh, overall by £20 a month. And that was because of the government here, the state pension, which you don't pay tax on, had increased but my company pension was taken out a different amount each month now, and that was the the reason given when I rang the tax office. You see, half half the time these things happen without you knowing. They just come up, you know, from behind, and you're suddenly <laughs> presented with a situation that you know knew nothing about. Exactly. Well, that's what happened here. Uh, I get a like a an advice slip, a payment advice slip from my company pension, and. Um, it had changed from X number of pounds to twenty pounds less. This well, it will be for the next year until I, you know, go through the tax regime again. And that's that's two hundred and forty pound a year. I'm less by having an increase from the um, the government pension. But if you go down to Markwell House, like a lot of these are, they will get the benefits increased to cover any loss that they've got like that. They're having their rent paid and uh, various other aspects. So um, this is something they should be looking at. There was no mention of anything like that yesterday, uh, only that we're trying to encourage them. Into, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And that's exactly what's happening here. They're living just on the, the borderline of what they want. Everything's paid for them. And... They don't want to get out of bed or go do and find a job. And some of them are very clever when they go down. Your colleague uh, who had the coffee shop in Athol Street, he said on the radio show, I remember his words, that the ones that came in for a job, he wouldn't have employed them. And that is, they're very clever in that aspect. They're all good actors. Okay. So that's my rant for today. All right, have a good weekend. Uh, okay. Good to hear from you. Thanks for being with us today. Okay, bye now. It's 25 to 1. Do you think the Isle of Man should have a housing association? Out and about this summer, EVF service stations have everything you need to make the most of it. Hot and cold food, chilled wine and beers, barbecue essentials and more. You can even pick up your lottery tickets at our stations across the island. Fill up, fuel up with Ellen Vannin Fuels. Visit us at evf.co.im. Stocks and offers 
price may vary between locations. I began to struggle with the stairs, but I didn't want to leave our family home. So my daughter told me about Acorn Stairlifts and their new showroom in Douglas. I was able to try the stairlifts and find the right one for me and the home I love. They were so friendly. The whole process was hassle-free and they offered the whole package from installation to servicing. Choose the island's first choice for stairlifts. Acorn Stairlifts, South Quay, Douglas. Call Acorn Stairlifts now on 672 414 or call into our Douglas showroom. Do you know a scrap man? Because I've got scrap to clear. Cars in copper, brass and lead and I need cash for beer. What? You don't know a scrap man? Castains and Foxel is the one for you. Castains will take all scrap metal and is also licensed for dry cell and lead acid batteries. So don't delay. Ring 801 337 now. So now we know a scrap man and all our scrap's been cleared. Ring 801 337 then have cash for beer. Call cost dies today and get yourself a beer. This year's Stage Ed West End Summer School is going to be even more magical. Because as well as the chance to work with musical theatre pros and perform in front of family and friends, you could also land a part in Aladdin. This year's Christmas pantomime at the Villa Gaiety in association with the Department of Education, Sport and Culture. The Stage Ed Summer School, back at Ballycommune High School Studio Theatre, 24th to the 28th of July and 31st of July to the 6th of August for all ages from 6 to 18. Visit stage-edholidayschools.com for details and booking. Supported by Tower Insurance and your nation station, Manx Radio. Jump aboard the time train and take a trip back to the 1960s on Carnaby Street every Saturday morning at half past eight with Isle of Man Railways. It's full of 60s hits and memories. On board the time train, Gladys the Tea Lady. All right, boys. Harry the Driver. Hello, crispy old mate. Roger the Fireman. All aboard Isle of Man Railways time train. Oh, and Raffles the Dog. <laughs> And, of course, you and me. You can win tickets for two for one of the Isle of Man Railway's fantastic dining car experiences. Carnaby Street, half past eight, on Manx Radio, on AM, FM, online, on smart speakers, and all over the world at manxradio.com. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. What a shame it was, says Texter374, that that uh, 87-year-old man that called the DHS for information about his wife wasn't offered an officer to visit the home. At that age, surely that should have happened. Uh... A note here from Andy just said uh, it's for, to David Ashford, where's his line-by-line line reply? Is he still claiming sub judice or does he think time will pass and people will forget? If so, he's wrong. Uh, so, David, tell us uh, when you'll do it. Um, uh, presumably, is this about the uh, Rosalind Ransom case? Well, uh, that, that second... Um, uh, Instance, I think uh, the second claim wrapped up yesterday. I think there's going to be a decision on what's going to happen there. Uh, incidentally, David Asher is going to be on week after next. David Asher will, will be on Man in Line uh, talking about, well, everything, to be quite honest. Uh, he's on Wednesday, 28th of this month. So next Monday, Tim Johnston, MHK, and Mark Lewin, the Minister for Enterprise and the Chief Officer, the Chief Exec at uh, Enterprise, will be on. Wednesday, 28th, that's uh, the week after, David Ashford will be on and the final Friday for the June will be Chief Minister Alfred Cannon MHK will be on Manx Radio. So what's going to happen then? Is there going to be a housing association on the Isle of Man? A study into whether the Isle of Man should have a housing association is uh, underway. We'll see uh, exactly uh, what happens um, Mr Cannon's currently in Jersey for the latest meeting of the British Irish Council with a focus on green and affordable building practices. Well, the Council of Ministers has tasked the DOI Minister, uh, Mr Thomas, with putting together a feasibility study for a new board modelled on Jersey's housing association, which is called Andium Homes. So, where are we going to get with that, I wonder? Eric's with us now. Hi, Eric. Hello, Andy. How are you? Good, thank you. I'd like to speak on what Howard has just been on about, about the the, uh, the tax credit allowance. Yes. Now, this is, uh, I've got a copy of the letter here. We, we get it at home here, which is £400 each because we're, we're on pension and we don't earn any more, any, enough to pay income tax. And uh, it's a pers- it's, it says here, the personal tax allowance credit system is designed to assist those people who are on low incomes and do not normally benefit from any increase in the income tax allowances. That's what it's for. It means that when the, when the threshold for tax payment goes up, uh, unless you pay tax, it doesn't affect you. 
Oh, I see. So what's it called? The tax credit? Tax credit. For personal allowance credit, for, we get £400 each every year. Oh. That's to help us to 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 to, co- to cope with the, the fact that they they put the tax credit up every year, or they they should be doing. And uh, the, the, because whatever they put, but you're not paying tax. You don't whatever they put the tax credit, the tax uh, threshold up, it doesn't affect you. So it's it's, it's to help us to cover for that. Right. Okay. So the, Eddie Tia had reduced it some years ago. At one time, it was £750 each. Ah, that's what Howard was referring to, was £750. Then he reduced it in his budget to £500. Then he reduced it in the following budget to £400 each. And it's never gone up since. And I raised this actually last year with uh, the Minister... uh, for, for the Social Security when you had him on, uh, David Ashford, and brought it up to him, and he, he, he didn't really answer the question when I asked him about it, because it, it really, that's, it, it, it's, been, it's been now, that's the same amount of money now for the last six or seven years. And do you think that should be increased? Well, it's, uh, well everything else is. <laughs> that's a good point. You know, everything else goes up in line with inflation or whatever else, but this hasn't gone up for the last six or seven years, and I honestly think it's time somebody looked at it. Because from seven hundred and fifty pound each to eight hundred pound between two of us is quite a drop. Um, okay. All right. I appreciate I that. Bring it in and make make it clear what what the actual allowance is for. Okay. Thanks for that. You're very welcome. Um, My pleasure. Have a good weekend. Now it's eighteen minutes before one. So a housing association for the Isle of Man. Currently we have the private sector and we have the public sector for housing. Housing association. Something in the middle. Now they've got one in Jersey. It's called Andium Homes. Mr. Cannon is currently in Jersey. These types of models across the UK are delivering significant benefits for their customers, for their tenants, and indeed, because of the way they're structured, they can deal with more than just social housing needs, but they can deliver a greater range of affordable housing and put it into different formats. It doesn't just have to be for rent, it can also be for purchase as well. Well, we wonder what's going to happen. Obviously, Mr Thomas is putting together a feasibility study for a new board, another board, to see whether or not we could have a housing association. This is the thing where you join a housing association, you can part own a property with a housing association with a a subsequent um, opportunity to purchase the property from the housing association. Uh, They're not normally run for profit, and they are fairly successful really across the UK and in other places so do you think it's time to have a a housing association on the Isle of Man Uh, uh, I've got a note in and it was from uh, Maxine and she was saying you were talking the other day about uh, about the airport and the man from the airport said he was upset about people calling it a a tea break when it's a fatigue break have you got the actual times well actually I have the the airport is open at certain times. Uh, this is bearing in mind last night the EasyJet flight didn't go, so I know there were a couple of government ministers who were on Mananan this morning uh, heading to England. Lots of people were on the boat this morning. No doubt one or two businessmen who came over to the Isle of Man to do business who couldn't get back to Gatwick last night. So it's not... The problem is air traffic controllers. We got to the bottom of that. It's not having enough air traffic controllers and air traffic controllers have to work certain times and they do have to have fatigue breaks. That's the one thing. They are fatigue breaks. Remember, they're not tea breaks. Uh, So I've got the times for the airport at the moment. Monday to Saturday, the airport is open, i.e. it's staffed by air traffic controllers, 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., 5 past 9 till 11 a.m., 11.35 till 1.30, quarter past 2 until 4 o'clock, 25 to 5 until half past 6. Okay, and then uh, the final one is 20 past 7 20 past 7 until a quarter to 9. That Those are the current ones. It is uh, subject to a change, and, of course, there is discretion that can be allowed. On Sunday, the airport is staffed for air traffic control from 6.45 until 8.30, from 5 past 9 until 11, from 11.35 until 
from 2.15 until 4 o'clock, from 4.35 until half past six, and from 7.20 until a quarter to nine. So those are the current, what they call no TAMs, that have been sent out to pilots and when Isle of Man Airport will be open for service, i.e. staffed by air traffic controllers. We were hoping to try and get to the bottom of what happened last night with the EasyJet to Gatwick. As yet, we've had no reply. It's good to talk. It's how we get things done. So when you apply for a personal loan from Black Horse, you'll get support from one of our relationship managers who's there to talk you through your application. You could borrow up to £50,000 with up to seven years to pay it back and you could receive your money within 24 hours of approval. Ready to talk? Go to blackhorseoffshore.co.uk to request a call back today. Finance subject to status. Applicants must be 18 or over. There's a new way to Subway with two fantastic menus. Which will you go for? The all-new Subway series with 15 irresistible creations like the Big Bombay Sub, Great Goddess Salad, Emperor Wrap and Big Cheese Steak Sub Melt. Or create your own. You pick the ingredients you want and build your own sub, salad or wrap the way you want it. There's a great mix of healthy and indulgent menu items available from Subway and ShopRite, Peel and Port Erin. When couples decide to part, there's a lot to deal with. There's the matter of the children, the matter of your property, the matter of pensions. You need to consider the matter of existing wills and perhaps the matter of a business. And because you matter, Man Benham Advocates are here for you when it comes to divorce and family matters. For help and advice and a free initial consultation, call Man Benham on 639 350. Man Benham, here for you. Henshaw, have you ironed my shirts? Yes. Oh, uh, no. Francis, have you collected my post? I'm just on my... Henshaw, move my trunk. Yeah, I'm just going to eat. Francis. Henshaw. Cool. It's bleeding hard work having two jobs. One man, two governors. Blimey. I'm skinned, famished, and running around after two governors. Francis, where's my cash? Coming. I haven't eaten in years. Anyone got a sandwich? Watch the service player's hilarious production of the West End smash, One Man, Two Governors, at the Gaiety Theatre, 22nd to 24th of June. Visit villagaiety.com for tickets. Kindly supported by Manx Radio. It's time to find out who's the daddy. With Tell Skips and your nation station, Manx Radio. Daddy cool, daddy cool. Sunday is Father's Day, and to celebrate, you could win your dad a £200 voucher to spend at 1886. Check out the two photos on our Facebook page this weekend. If you can guess who the famous fathers are, send your name and the dad's name to 166177, starting with the word dad. Then on Monday in Manx Radio Breakfast, we'll pick a winner. A daddy cool, daddy cool. And if you need a skip for home or garden, remember, tells of the daddy. Call 677-137 or search them online. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Has to buy and John's with us now. Hi, John. Hi, Andy. Andy, uh, it's about Ramsey Beach. Yeah. Yeah, what it is, I was on the beach about three weeks ago with my grandchildren, and for want of a better word, it was filthy. It was, you know, it was filthy. Which one are we Anyways, talking I, about, South Beach or Murrook? Uh, South Beach. The okay. one right in front of Ramsey Lifeboat Station, if you look to the right, there's a huge pocket of sand. That itself was just absolutely filthy. So I set about trying to find out what I could do to get it cleaned up. Uh, I spoke to June McGuinness. He said he wasn't allowed to clean it with reference to nesting birds. Now, uh, right, so then I phoned Defe. Defa said the beach can be cleaned. First have a recce, make sure there's no nesting birds on it. If there isn't any, clean the beach. Who 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 did you speak to at Defa? Oh, I can't remember the lady's name, but I can assure you I did speak to someone and that's how it is. That's the letter of the law for that beach. It can be cleaned. And they said you I need can't... to just do a recce and it can be cleaned. Yeah, just do a quick recce, make sure there's no nest there, which there isn't, because the only thing that is there at the moment is huge amounts of litter, debris and seaweed that's been possibly in there all year. It's turned brittle. You can't walk on it. So it can be cleaned. So as to why it's not being cleaned, it's beyond me. You know, Mr. McGuinness needs to hang his head in shame because that beach is priceless for kids to go on to. They really enjoy it. It was even better when the raft was there, but obviously the raft's not there now. It got damaged and they're saying they're not replacing it. It's like Ramsey's just going backwards all the time. 
there's stuff there they could really exploit and use for the town, but they're not. And that beach is one of them. And the excuse of nesting birds, that is an excuse. It's not really a valid excuse. There is no nesting birds there. They're quite entitled to clean it. That's all I've got to say. OK, good to hear from you, John. Thanks for that today. If you've got any thoughts about this regarding the, the beach, uh, South Beach in, in Ramsey, well, if De- I mean, obviously we haven't had that officially, but if DEFA are happy with it for it to be cleared, if there are no nesting birds there, and it won't because it's not the season, if it's just rubbish, surely somebody could just get it cleaned up. Schools break up in a few weeks' time, and it's going to be absolutely alive, particularly if this weather sticks with us. Uh, is there any uh, a comparison of the air traffic airport air traffic work times with the time of flight? Seems the times are out of sync with the evening flight. Well, the thing is that evening flight should be in, should be out at eight forty-five, which is when at the moment they say that uh, the airport's going to close at eight forty-five. But the, the issue, and again, Gary Cobb made it perfectly clear, the airport director, the, the planes just don't sit there waiting to come to us. They've got other legs and other destinations. And typically, I think, perhaps was it the one last night, had to come from Faro in Portugal to get to Gatwick and then to come to us. And once you pick up 10-minute delays, half an hour delays here, there and everywhere, we're the last stop of the day. And obviously EasyJet will want to get the air, the, the aeroplane back to Gatwick because no doubt it's got to leave Gatwick first thing in the morning to go to somewhere. And an aircraft only makes money, commercial aircraft only makes money when it's in the air. So EasyJet have to sweat their resources. And presumably they'll make the decision that there's no point having a, an EasyJet plane stuck at Ronald's Way because it's not going to earn them any money. It's going to screw up their system for the next day. So we are caught in the middle of this. Now, if there's a way out, obviously Mr Cobb is trying to run the airport. The DOI is responsible for the airport. But we're the paying passengers. The airlines are trying to make money out of it all because you know, they're running a business. But as it stands at the moment, that last EasyJet, the Gatwick EasyJet, the late flight, is something of a bagatelle. It's like playing roulette. Nobody quite knows. If you had somebody who was sitting there last night, well, and there was a situation recently where there were four flights waiting to get out and lots of people stuck in the departures lounge in this weather. Well... It can't really go on, can it? Or can it? Uh, Goodness me, it's quite ridiculous to give people money for not paying tax, says Betty. Well, that's the way it is. That is the situation, as Eric said, the personal allowance. Uh, Can anyone, did anyone find out how many Year 7 pupils at Bemahig have their mobiles confiscated earlier this week, says Andy. Not heard anything about that. If anybody's got more information on Year 7 pupils at Bemahig having their mobiles confiscated. And talking of uh, school students, it was a message in from Denise who said, so let me just find it here from Denise. It was regarding, uh, oh yes, your broadcast from Castle Russian earlier on this week. I, uh, I found it very illuminating. And one thing I loved was the fact that none of the pupils liked football, which is great, says Denise, because I hate football and have to have it on the television in the season because we've got Sky. <laughs> My husband likes it. So at least the, the, <laughs> the younger generation can teach us something. I'm not sure they were entirely representative, but we had a great bunch of pupils live at Castle Russian High School earlier this week. Uh, When phoning Manx Energy, says Pete, I got a call centre in Glasgow, Pete on 713, since the change of name from Manx Gas uh, to Alaman Energy, the accounting service is rubbish. Of all the excellent Manx-based accounts and backup staff, all been made redundant, uh, says uh, this. And Karen, just uh, to reiterate what was said yesterday, um, I'd like to ask why, uh, when in need of incapacity benefit, you're assessed on a period of your NI contributions. Why is it not your entire NI contributions? I'm Manx-born, worked all my life, got an autoimmune disorder, but have been refused incapacity benefits due to a period of 
of not paying NI when I got made redundant. Bit of a kick in the teeth, especially as a Manx born, says uh, Karen. Uh, thanks for that. Good to hear from you. Hi, Andy. This is Daisy. I'm just ringing up to say thank you for your show today. And will you thank Julian Dewan, Howard, David, Peter, please, uh, for all the input they give, uh, which is informative and interesting. And also, thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. Bye. I don't know who put that in. But thank you, it's good to hear from you. I'd be interested to find out the time of air traffic controllers and what they do at Gatwick and Heathrow, says Des. Well, the issue is we're down. That's the problem. I think we shouldn't we have, is it 15 or 16 air traffic controllers? I think we're down to about eight and a half or nine air traffic controllers. That's our whole point. I mean, they're saving a fortune in personnel costs. But that's the situation. Isn't it strange, by the way, that everything was fine during TT? There weren't that many uh, cancellations, or were there any cancellations during TT? Now, well, this is what's happening. That's it. Thanks for being with me this week. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks to Howie Kane on the phone. We're live with uh, Tim Johnston and Mark Lewin. W. On Monday. I. N.